welcome to the Expert Stage, an interview series specially designed to you by Century Health. I'm Dr. Lyra, a general dentist practicing in Malaysia for the past six years, and I'm honored to be the host of this session today. Today, we are pleased to welcome Dr. Ricardo Tonini, a well-known endodontist from Italy. Dr. Ricardo obtained his bachelor degree and master in science from University of Brescia in 2004, and he gained his master in endodontic from University of Verona in 2007. He is currently a professor and the head of endodontic department in University of Brescia. Besides contributing to research, publications, and dental education, Dr. Ricardo is also an active member of several reputable endodontic societies such as Sal Italiano. On top of that, he's extremely passionate steward inventions and innovations in dentistry. This has led him to invent protrain and collaborate in other innovation in industries such as plasma and plano. And today, he'll be sharing with us his expert opinion on the trends in endodontic education. Without further ado, let us invite the charismatic Dr. Ricardo. Buongiorno, Dr. Ricardo. How are good you? Good morning and buongiorno. How is going? <laughs> I'm good. It's nice to meet you virtually and thank you for joining us. My pleasure, my pleasure, first of all. Right. Great pleasure and also a big honor to be here to can if I can participate to uh, this interview and thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. To the year 2020 has been an unprecedented and surreal year as the world faces the truly powerful COVID-19 pandemic. The impact in the field of dentistry has been profound. We, dental clinicians, have been named as one of the most at-risk profession due to the aerosol-generated procedure such as the use of high-speed drill. So could you please tell us how has the pandemic changed dental practices and dental procedure? We, uh, thanks for the questions. Uh, I can tell you that we are facing uh, a time, so a era, that uh, we never seen, have seen before. Something in, uh, with this virus that uh, we have to live with and we have to work with. So our daily practice is completely changed, in my opinion, in terms of time, because our uh, sessions are longer and we are taking more care. And this is a good point of view. We are taking more care about our patients. We are taking care about uh, if they are ill or not, because we call them the day before in order to we make a sort of interview, basically, if they have a symptoms or not. And so the idea in general is that we are investing more, more time and more human resources in taking care of our patient first. When the patient steps inside our dental office, is, uh, the feeling is uh, uh, that they are uh, uh, feeling safe here because we are keeping and maintaining the distances between them, first of all. We are checking them directly here and we are guiding personally to the dental chair. Inside the dental cabinet, inside the dental office uh, or in the operative area, they mm -hmm. feel that everything has been uh, uh, cleaned and sanitized for them. So, is uh, uh, w in my opinion, we are doing now exactly what we would have to do every day, even if we have a virus on the, our uh, back. So, time, taking care, and dental procedures, of course. We, mm -hmm. we have to use many, many different new tools, many different uh, uh, um, advices and uh, uh, additional uh, technologies like a high-speed suction in order to avoid aerosol, mm -hmm. for example. And of course, we have to use more 
because it's a suggested form uh, also for uh, the um, uh, the general the world scientific uh, program that we have to use all protective devices as much as right. yeah so um by doing all these extra risk assessment when patient before patient um visiting our dental clinic and using all the um protective equipment that we have it it, it does um help us to reassure the public about um dental care isn't it right yeah. so what are the new precautions one needs to take to protect dental profession and patient from covid 19 what's new yeah, uh, the new the new devices that we have to use uh, are first of all personal uh, devices like FPP2, like a mask. We have to use a face shield if possible, as much as we can, and also our dental assistant must wear there. If we are using a microscope, yeah. we have to completely cover it and oh. uh, only the eyes out, so the only the uh, to view in and after of course we have to wear a protection for all the body that is a single use right this is first of all we have to cover also our airs we have to work like uh, it seems sometimes to see a, 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 a movie a disaster movie sometimes like we are mm -hmm. uh, on so uh, in something that uh, can uh, scary ourselves mm -hmm. more in my opinion than patient yeah it does look like we are wearing space suit when we try to uh, work in our dental clinic isn't it yeah. right so besides new precaution actually things like rubber dam it, it helps to reduce the error so um so much and it yeah. has been in dentistry for decades i think and yeah. um do you think rubber dam is still the gold standard in operative dentistry we we can say that uh, at the moment i can tell you that uh, finally i'm really happy why because i spent many time many years many years in trying to educate people in using rubber dam for the daily practice because we have many benefits only benefits yeah. no no uh, nothing uh, has a draw uh, drawback and yeah. rubber dam can, we can say that rubber dam is a gold standard of the past it's a gold standard of the present and it will be a gold standard for the future so in uh, i can tell you that uh, in uh, in dentistry we have seen a lot of technological devices that uh, uh, are uh, they are launched every two years at uh, the main uh, exhibition like ids so something really expensive but at the end probably the most important device that we have nowadays is represented again by rubber dam simple but really effective because it is the only device that can really protect us from aerosol from the from the oral environment of the patient and we have so many benefits we can re remove saliva we yeah. can see better we have a yeah. contract we can protect us and our assistant. We can work faster, better, in a, in a more predictable way. And uh, it's unuseful because it's useful instead because if we use adhesives and uh, composite restorations, it has no sense to don't use rubber dam. Yeah. No yeah, sense. I, I absolutely agree with that. And it can prevent the instruments or anything from dropping inside the patient's mouth or shirt as well. Sure yeah sure. well sure you 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 <laughs> you show me the worst situation i'm not thinking about that i'm, I'm thinking about the really daily practice not in the worst scenario but in the easiest scenario yeah. so yeah i fully agree the amazing roles of rubber dam in isolation of operating field and um its effectiveness in reduction of spread of microorganism especially during this stage of pandemic isn't it right however the rubber dam usage among clinicians remains surprisingly low sure. and yeah how many percent of dentists in italy use rubber dam as part of their daily practices i would like to reply to you 100 percent i would Ooh. like 
And wow. I would like, I would like, but unfortunately I can't because I can tell you that in my opinion in Italy, we, yeah. as considering GPs, considering specialists, yeah. we can say that around 60%, 50-60% of dentists, in my opinion, are using rubber dam. I, I asked the to an important company in Italy to give me some uh, new trends and, uh, for the future, before COVID-19. And they told me that, of course, rubber dam, it represents a good investment because it will be something that should be and will be inside our dental offices in the future, of course, before COVID-19. I can imagine now, if I ask them, what about rubber dam? They can only reply me, it's a, a real business now for us, even if it's cheap. Of course, it's a cheap product, but it's a daily use product. And in my opinion, is one of the most simple things to use. Of course, you have to educate people. Definitely. And exactly what I do every day in my university. If I see some student that is not using rubber dam, he has to stop immediately. Yeah, that, that is the only way to educate it. Yeah, you are doing it correctly. Yep. All right. I, I really hope that this pandemic could be the turning point for us to change our habits. And um, yeah, because we always aim to provide a better care for our patients. And now is the time to pick up this new habit of using rubber dam in the, as many procedures as possible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, rubber yep. dam uh, is, uh, uh, is a must-have. It's a must-have, but, but yep. we, we should have to do more in the past. Now, yeah. we, is, uh, uh, we are running uh, mm -hmm. a lot in order to... I have many people that are asking me, please, uh, of course, not young, but pretty old, please, can you explain me how to use rubber dam? <laughs> And it's yeah. usually simple. I, I, if, I, um, if I explain to my nephew how to use it, in my opinion, mm -hmm. also my nephew is able to do that. Oh, right. Yeah, I think um, placing rubber, rubber, band, rubber dam requires um, practices. That's why um, we need to train the more dentists, either young or old, to, to really pick up the skill, isn't it? And um, would you... Tell us how you would um, tell your patient who fear of contracting COVID-19 through their dental visits. In the dental bindings, in my opinion, uh, uh, patients are not so scared about uh, uh, COVID-19 inside our dental buildings. They are more scared about COVID-19 outside here. Oh. And, and again, uh, but what I, I understood is that patients are really well informed about what is safe, how to work safe. And so when they step inside our dental buildings, they know exactly how are the main rules. If they see that you are using a surgical mask, they, uh, they ask you, why are you using a surgical mask and not an FPP2? Wow. Why are you not wearing this kind of protection? And when they understood that I changed in, with the high-speed devices for the suction of the aerosol, I changed my daily practice, mm -hmm. they understood that uh, I added something with high value to my daily practice. So dentists uh, are taking care of them and mm -hmm. patients are really well informed. The sensation is here inside dental buildings, I feel more comfortable than outside when uh, I, uh, they feel less comfortable in, uh, uh, while they are purchasing goods, well, while they are doing shopping around, where, when they are walking around, even if we, they are in the open air. I see. That, that's really great to know that the patients in Italy are actually very well educated about dentists' role in sterilization and um, cross-infection control, that we are playing our role very well, that they have trust in the dentists in Italy. 
that doesn't reflect very well with um, different parts of the world. So I guess in this point of view, um, we should like educate the public about the efforts that we put in to ensure their safety during dental treatment. I, I think that is very important, right? So that we can achieve what um, you guys have achieved in Italy. And how has the pandemic affected dental courses and workshops so far? <laughs> This is a, a, a good question. So, educational programs um, uh, has been really affected in, uh, uh, in Italy and also in Europe, I can say. Um, we recently, we opened a new training course in Milan with microscope and everything. It's a, 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 a training center for 16 people. And they, we, have, we can respect the distance of two meters from one to each other. What I have seen uh, uh, in general is, uh, of course, people, they want to train a lot, but unfortunately, rules uh, gave us uh, some uh, uh, limitations in, uh, in terms of uh, how many people in the same room, they, keeping the, the distance, and honestly, uh, considering that they blocked at such point all the transfer for people from one city to the others, at that point, I can tell you that our courses went to zero. So COVID-19 affected a lot our training, but we were available and we, uh, we opened a new door, like a technological door, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, trying to share our experience through the web, through a uh, technological or a virtual platform. And nowadays we are almost available and it's almost possible to do some workshop virtual. I, I know mm -hmm. uh, more for in Italian, I can tell you uh, that the taste is different. Mm -hmm. As Italians, we want to touch each other. We want yeah. to communicate. We want to, um, to feel the experience of the social and right. honestly in my opinion now we are pretty tired of uh, all what is do is happen uh, uh, virtually mm. we would like to come back uh, in place in the right. future probably at the moment the whole workshops are blocked oh. in the with we did something uh, in the spring Mm -hmm. because COVID-19 uh, uh, was reduced, but nowadays, and until uh, the end of the year, in my opinion, all the courses, congresses, and training is suspended. Oh, that must be a very challenging time for both the students and the lecturers, yeah. yeah. And online, online distance learning is, is a new thing that we have to, um, how to say, adapt to until the situation becomes better. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dentistry is a progressive profession which constantly evolves and transforms these technological innovations. Could you tell us how has endodontics changed in the past 20 years? Or, well, uh, in the past 20 years, we have seen a great evolution in endodontics. First of all, the, the treatment plan uh, uh, has been changing totally in terms of time. In one hour nowadays, we are able to do a complete root canal session in one visit. Why? Because we, we have seen that basically we were more informed about how to open a cavity, how to scout a root canal system with nickel titanium for rotary files. Of course, they changed the timing of the end of session. And nowadays we are able also to fill the root canal system with a new trendy material like mm -hmm. bioceramics. So it, the evolution in endodontics is growing every year. The trend in endodontics nowadays, everyone is talking about bioceramics. They are talking about disinfection with the polymeric needle and not in the uh, uh, stainless steel needle. So everyone are looking for trends, but in my opinion, we have not to miss the point because sometimes we are running very fast with the technologies and yeah. in order to link to what we said before, I have a lot of people that are using new technologies like nickel titanium, 
bioceramics, but they don't isolate properly the field. They don't use rubber bands. So it has no sense. But in any case, technologies are helping us a lot. We have also CBCT that can give us a 3D analysis of the anatomy in advance. We can also, from CBCT, print 3D models in order to do training before treating the patient. So when we have a difficult case, we can print in advance, we can educate us in advance. So technology is helping a lot, but yeah. we have not to miss the point. This is my suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I'm truly grateful for all these advancements, which has significantly increased the efficacy and efficiency of root canal treatment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what are the major trends in endodontics today, like the main trend now? The main trends are yeah. bioceramics, of course, yeah. bioceramics, sealers, mm -hmm. uh, bioceramics as uh, materials in general, and a deep disinfection. So polymeric needle, uh, as I told you before, and uh, heat-treated files, of course, heat-treated files. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we are thanks to rotary files uh, with the heat treatment, we can uh, shape in a more comfortable way our root canal system uh, independently from the anatomy. Okay, that, that, that's great. And do you use plasma for disinfecting the root canal system? Plasma is uh, something yeah. in which I'm investing a lot of time. Plasma is uh, the cold atmospheric plasma is uh, a technological device that will uh, uh, approach our endo practice uh, in the next future. It's a cheap device and is a plasma is uh, the four matter uh, the four state of matter. We have a solid, liquid, air and in the middle we can have plasma so four <laughs> and that, the plasma very interesting yeah plasma is uh, uh, a disinfection basically is uh, a way to disinfect deeply our mm -hmm. root system in an easy way and in a predictable way because mm -hmm. uh, air can reach the deepest part of the root system more than any liquid so we can uh, improve the disinfection more. Usually plasma is used for uh, uh, disinfecting surfaces, uh, mm -hmm. food. The food that you eat in the airplane mm -hmm. is uh, treated with the cold atmospheric plasma. So oh. it's uh, completely sterilized, yes. Okay, yeah. I learned something today. You learned something new about plasma today. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and. Um, are dentists sufficiently trained and equipped with the latest endodontic techniques and technologies? In generally, I can tell you that in Europe, sure, they are, uh, uh, they have the latest technology they want to try, but uh, in any case, uh, there, uh, there is only a few percentage of dentists that want to be always updated. So in dentistry, we have two ways. The ways of the GPs uh, that here in Italy and Europe means uh, a really low level of uh, dentistry. And instead, uh, and it's different from the other part of the world uh, okay. because GPs outside the world, outside are really better. For us mm -hmm. are more uh, uh, like uh, uh, high level dentistry. Instead for us here, GP is really a basic dentistry, a really busy, basic dentistry. And the other way is the real specialist. So you decide your field, you decide your way, endodontics, prostodontics, and you follow only this way. So basically specialist, endospecialist, resto specialist. So, uh, and this is a good point for the future. In the future, there will be, in my opinion, no, no more GPs as, mm -hmm. Dentists that can uh, do everything, but we will uh, see more specialists together in the same building in order to provide a better outcome to our patient, a better service to the patient, of course. Yeah, I, I agree with the comprehensive treatment that we'll be able to um, provide patients by doing so, isn't it? 
So there is no list of technological advancement is complete without discussing advances in dental education. In order to learn from these innovations, it is crucial for us to attend hands-on endodontic trainings which best simulate intraoral procedure. And you have specially designed ProTrain for that. <laughs> Can you tell us more about ProTrain? ProTrain Pro -train is my son. Basically, when I remember, yes, basically I can tell that. I remember when I was a student, a few years ago, yeah. when I was a student, uh, I felt since the beginning, okay, you are giving me extracted teeth. You are telling me that I have to treat the extracted teeth, but when I go in vivo, the situation is completely different. And so I thought to myself, why don't try to develop a device that can simulate completely the oral environment but for endo for endodontics it means that i can connect an apex locator i can take take the working length i can try to respect the working length shipping cleaning and filling and i can do also isolation on pro train on that i can place a clamp i can place a rubber dam i can try also to isolate it and it's exactly like in vivo ProTrain is a real device. It's a device, is a, a system for training, simple. We can say that it's a simple, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's not so, it's a cheap, but it's useful. And it's, a, it's a strange when you travel, it's happened to me, uh, when you travel to work and uh, I saw um, uh, a, a huge, a, an important manager of uh, a huge company that he was dealing with ProTrain during an exhibition. And uh, he, he was there looking, trying to understand something about the device. I, <laughs> I stepped inside his uh, exhibition panel and I told uh, to, to him, hey, I, I, are you um, uh, trying my, my device? Ah, it's yours? Oh, uh, who are you? Dr. Tonini? <laughs> oh. You have my full attention now. It's so smart, so easy and smart. And, and every time that you travel, it's, it's happened that they know you through ProTrain. So mm -hmm. I invented it in 2006 and still now is running very well. It's used around the world inside university. And I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of it because when you see uh, in your creation that is in all the universities of the world, it seems it means that you did a good job. A good job is a, a sort of a popular job. Yeah, you, I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> I, I, I'm really amazed by it. Unfortunately, I, it wasn't available for me during the training. So um, I think the students now are very lucky because they can use ProTrain to learn root canal treatment, like how it is when we do it in our patient mouths without skipping a step. And, and you actually make this possible, really. And um, aside from training, ProTrain can be used for research purposes too, am I right? Yes, yes, it can be used and has been used for researches in order uh, to check the, 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 um, how the apex locators works, what, uh, what is the best apex locator, and also during uh, the procedures. So how to respect the apex while you are shipping, because nowadays we have also endomotors uh, in cordless design that are connected to the apex locator. So you can shape directly taking the working length or respecting the working length. But sometimes it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So ProTrain explained exactly also to researcher why, why it works and why not. Mm. So I, I had the opportunity to see some papers with the ProTrain inside, inside material and method. And when you see also that, you, I was really proud of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You should. It's really amazing. And, and I must say that you are truly gifted with brilliant mind. And I really admire your words. Yeah. Um, and um, as we come to the end of today's interview, 
Do you have any advice for your fellow colleagues around the world during this period of uncertainty? First of all, stay safe. And how to stay safe? You have to use rubber dam. <laughs> so back to basic, please. Without rubber dam, you can't do nothing. You can't do endo. You can't do resto. And so back to basic. Sometimes I... I see you, my, I'm referring to my colleagues, that you are purchasing 3D scanner, expensive devices, microscope, and you don't use the basic tool. The most yeah. important one, rubber dam, the most simple, a shield. And this is my preferred one, silk color from Sanctuary, mm -hmm. this one, medium size, medium is thickness. Yeah. So use back to basic please and stay safe for us and my per my personal uh, experience is when i work with rubber dam nowadays i feel more safer and i feel better because also my assistant i feel that it's safer without rubber dam the all the procedures are limited limited so in now, nowadays, I'm doing more and more under rubber dam. I'm removing the old film materials with rubber dam immediately. So the first thing that I do is anesthesia and immediately after rubber dam, immediately. So the second step. And I remove rubber dam later, after that I polish it, after that I place it the temporary filling every I, as a last step i remove rubber dam so my suggestion for every dam everyone around the world is work in a safe way but never forget the basic uh, rules of dentistry so use please i want to see in every dental office i want to see your rubber dam where in the proper way yeah yeah, I totally agree that we should all go back to basics and, and be very safe during this trying period, right? And um, moving forward, before we close, on behalf of Sanctuary Health, we would like to thank you again, Dr. Ricardo, for sharing with us your valuable expertise. And thank you everyone for participating. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.